Hey gents, welcome back to Tactical Rifleman. First off, I want to give a shout out to uh, one of our sponsors. This video is brought to you in part by Big Daddy Unlimited. Go there, sign up, monthly fee, but it gets you big discounts, dealer pricing on basically all the stuff you can get off of this table. All right, hey, um, why are we doing this video? We're going, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be shooting um, drywall, walls, right? We've built some more out here with money from our patrons. The reason why we're doing this, we've got a lot of comments on other past wall videos talking about, hey, I wanna see what the rounds do after they've gone through the ballistic gelatin and then through a wall. Replicating, going through the bad guy in the home invasion, through the wall and possibly into your loved one's bedrooms, another room in the house. So what we're gonna do is we're using uh, ballistic gelatin from Clear Ballistics. Now, people say all oh, this does not properly represent the body. They want me to use um, pieces of ham and pork ribs and watermelons and potatoes and uh, no, all right. No, because shooting human bodies, the, the, your wounds are going to be different whether you hit ribs or solid organs versus hollow organs. You get different effects. So the purpose of using ballistic gelatin is it's giving you a consistent medium to measure the effects of these ballistics against other ballist uh, against other projectiles. So our goal by FBI standard, now we're not gonna do this six layers of denim on the front. This isn't the 70s. We're not at Studio 54 wearing denim, All right? So what, what we do is we're representing uh, the depth that we need, the performance that we need to get deep enough into the human body to cause the damage that we want. It also helps show the permanent wound cavity and also the secondary cavitation from that shock wave uh, hitting the gelatin. Standard that we uh, people want is basically you want your uh, pistol rounds to stop in the second half of the block. In other words, not over penetrating, but we're getting deep enough into the target that we can hit those vital wound, uh, hit those vital organs. So, anyways, that's what we're looking at doing. What, so, to replicate this, we're gonna this ballistic block is uh, gonna represent our bad guy, our home invader on the, this side of the wall. This is a to represent the interior wall in your house, two layers of drywall with uh, two by four studs, no insulation on these walls. Right? And then on the back side of the wall, we have another block from Clear Ballistics to represent uh, that non-combatant, that loved one in the next room over. All right, so starting off, we're gonna use double op buckshot. In this case, this is Remington Nine Pellet Express. All right, um, that's the standard. All my viewers tell me double op buck is the best weapon for home defense. I got it, guys. I understand. So we're going to start off with the best of the best. All right, next thing we're going to shoot is we're going to shoot Golden Saber 45s. A lot of, uh, a lot of viewers requested us to use 45 hollow points. I have about a dozen different 45 hollow points. You lay them all out. Yes, I know. Some are more awesome. Some are less awesome. Everybody says theirs is the best. Gents, uh, the Golden Saber, uh, it's pretty well, it's, a, it's the standard that I like to use for 45s for tests like these. It's a great performing round. Now, when it comes to nine, uh, nine millimeter, there is a plethora of... Uh, of nine mil rounds out there. So I'm gonna use a couple squirrely ones that a lot of you probably haven't seen before. Uh, first one is from uh, G9 Ballistics. This one, let me make sure I get the name right because a lot of them are the same. All right, this is their external hollow point 80 grain. All right, now they call it a external hollow point because um, the, sol the solid brass projectile is not, it doesn't have a hollow point cut in the top. What it has is it has three fins cut on the top of it. And what it does is, remember, the, the uh, rifling in your pistol barrel goes this way, and those paddles, think of it like a paddle on a redneck's mudder, all right, uh, digging through the sand, those sand tires. Uh, they really throw that secondary, cav uh, secondary cavitation out through any medium that has fluid. Now, it doesn't perform quite as well in the ballistic, uh, clear ballistics blocks as it does the uh, regular FBI gelatin. FBI gelatin has more water in it, um, but it, let's see how it does. My big thing is I want to see how much over penetration will get through the wall. Now there's another type of nine millimeter. This one has similar fins caught on, uh, cut on it. This one's by Inceptor. This is their 
frangible ammo that's made for personal defense. Now it has similar fins cut on the tip, similar fins, uh, but this is a frangible projectile. It's designed that if it, if you miss the perpetrator and it hits the side of the refrigerator, it hits uh, that two by four stud in the wall, it will fr uh, fragment. Now it will go through drywall. Matter of fact, it'll go through lots of drywall. Not as many layers of drywall as a regular hollow point would, but it will still go through uh, a lot of drywall before it disintegrates. So, but again, we'll see how it does going through here. Supposed to do great, we shall see. Now, Inceptor makes another uh, round. Uh, this is their frangible 556. Now, they make frangible 300 blackout, uh, AK. I'm a big, f uh, big fan of frangible ammo because these rounds come apart quick and easy, and they don't have that thin copper jacket that a lot of other frangible ammo does. The advantage for me is for training on the range, and the advantage for you watching our videos is it allows me, Z, and our other demonstrators to shoot steel targets up close. Uh, without having to worry about the spall coming off of it. So we use a lot of Inceptor frangible 556, 300 blackout AK. Uh, I want to see what it'll do in this test. And then last but not least, uh, another 556 round. Uh, let me make sure I get the grain weight right. Uh, this is 55 grain nozzler ballistic tip. It's guys, this is a varmint round in uh, 556. Uh, now the reason why I chose a varmint round is uh, we were using the Hornady TAP, the Tactical Ac uh, Application Police, on a couple of deployments, and uh, that ammo is made for snipers to immediately come apart and deliver all of its energy right there, so they don't have to, uh, snipers don't have to worry about hitting the non-combatants in the bank, let's say, or apartment complex, whatever it is. Likewise, hunters like to use this ammo so that they don't get that ice pick through the side of the deer, the gopher, the elk, whatever it is, and it's designed to deliver all of its energy right there inside the varmint. Likewise, for home defense, I want to deliver all that energy in that home invader and not have this projectile go through the wall into my loved one's bedroom. That's why I don't like green tip and uh, uh, other rounds like that for home defense. I'm all about running an AR, but if you're gonna run an AR, use rounds specific for the purpose that you want. You wanna burn the guy down right there in the room. So we're gonna see how a, a ballistic tip 5.56 five, round uh, works in this test. So anyways, this is our lineup. These are the competitors in this test, and uh, let's get to it. All right, so we just shot a double op buckshot through our bad guy, through our uh, interior wall, double drywall with two by four studs. All of the projectiles, the 30 caliber, uh, 38 caliber balls all went through. Our block only caught two of them. The reason for that is that pattern has opened up going out of that block. So you'll see we've got some here that have come, uh, went over here on this side. The spread is that wide already. Uh, now, full disclosure, I was less than three meters, four meters away from this thing. I was very, very close to this guy. Well, muzzle of velocity. No, the reason why I got so close was because inside the house, you can be close. Think about this is already that wide. That's my, that's why to me, the shotgun is a drawback inside the house because I'm going to hit my bad guy but I don't want all these other stray things going out and catching my, uh, catching my family members or non-combatants throughout the house. So I want something that will stay right where I aim. So anyways, this is our first test and uh, the double up buckshot. If you wanted to get to your family members in the next room, you passed the test. Let's just put it that way. Let's go shoot the next one. All right, so this is the 45 caliber Golden Saber. It did go all the way through 
our perpetrator here, our first ballistic block, it entered the uh, drywall. You can see that where the, the brass pedals opened up around the lead projectile made a sexy hole in the wall here. There's no hole on the back. What does that mean? I have bulletproof walls. No, it meant when it left our ballistic gel lid and block, it did not have enough energy left. So if we had done it by FBI standards and put six layers of denim right here, that would have uh, probably given it a little more resistance. It would have stopped right about here. So anyways, I was expecting it to stay in the block. Doesn't matter. The goal of this test is we don't want it to get in the next room where the loved ones are. So um, again, it entered the wall. It opened up. It performed perfect. Uh, but it did not go through the other side of the wall. Awesome. Let's go to the next one. All right, so we knew viewers were going to complain. Carl should have done it with the cloth in front because that would have made it stay inside the block. You didn't do it right. Okay, so we went back and we laid one, two, three, four layers of cloth over the front. Hopes it would stay in the, in the block here. All right, not only didn't it stay in the block, one of the drawbacks of hollow points is they'll sometimes get clogged with fabric. People wear fabric, bad guys wear fabric. Anyways, we shot and you'll see the round is just slightly lower. It passed through our wall and it stopped right inside. It actually penetrated the wall and went about an inch into our family member back here on the back of the block. All right. Now, um, did it have enough energy to get into the back half of the block? No, it didn't. But it did penetrate slightly more because the hollow point was clogged with, um, with material, the cloth that it picked up. Now. Not so people would say it was a fluke. We then shot it again. Same way through the cloth, the same ways. And that's actually the one that went about four or five inches deeper into the block to right about here. In full disclosure, it passed very close to the, uh, to the wound path of that second, uh, second shot. And that's why it went a little bit further. You'll notice none of these projectiles are expanded. These, uh, these hollow points failed to expand at all. I'll dig them out of the block and show them to you, right? But they did not expand at all. All right, so this time we shot the G9 uh, external hollow points, what they call it. In other words, the holes are actually on the outside of it. Whole purpose of it is for it not to fill up with clothing. All right, so first time we shot it, it went clean through. Got, uh, it actually went backwards through our block. It tumbled and did not penetrate the second uh, layer of drywall. Not to be outdone, we brought out our cloth again and uh, it's hard to tell where you're aiming at a piece of cloth and I accidentally sent it through pretty well the exact same hole. It followed roughly the same path. You have a second hole in the drywall right here. And uh, again, it did not penetrate the drywall on the other side. It hit the drywall on the other side hard enough that it actually cracked the paper, but there's no hole on the other side. In other words, our if, we, if this was representing the, um, a wall in our home, in a home defense situation, our loved ones are still safe on the other side of the wall. Um, awesome ammunition. Let's try the next one.
All right, this is the uh, Inceptor frangible ammo. It's their home def uh, it's their self-defense ammo. It's still got the fins on it cut into the head to get to give it more secondary cavitation. Now we shot this block twice. The first, uh, the first one, if you look, it's down low. Uh, you can see where it start it gets that good secondary cavitation, it starts uh, starts to tumble a little bit, and then though the shock wave being kicked out by those uh, those fins on this thing really gets ugly in this area. It passed low out the bottom of the block, went into our drywall, penetrated one layer of drywall, did not penetrate the second uh, layer of drywall. We then added our cloth. We fired our second shot. Second shot I hit high up here. Yeah, sexy. Now you can see it's blown all kinds of uh, bits of cloth and stuff in here. You got good secondary cavitation. Went through the block. It actually exited the block right here. It started to yaw and uh, turned upwards. It exited our block, penetrated our drywall right here sideways. And then it, on the back side of the wall, it actually uh, blew out a, a dramatic looking chunk of drywall. Now, if you've ever shot ball at uh, or crossbows or everything else at drywall you know a bullet moving fast gives you a nice small hole pushing through drywall it breaks the paper so yes it tore a big piece out here but it wasn't going fast enough for me to uh, for me to actually consider it uh, lethal don't get me wrong I wouldn't have wanted it to hit a family member in the next uh, in the next room Unfortunately, it missed our, our whole block of gelatin here because it yawed upwards, uh, but it did penetrate the second layer of drywall. All right, let's try the next one. All right, so we just shot it with the um, the 556 Franz by Inceptor. Now, if you guys have watched my home defense videos before, you know I say a rifle's better than a pistol because it's more accurate. It's better than a um, it's better than a shotgun because it's easier to move around and because it's more accurate. Um, this is a 35 grain projectile. Now the thing's moving at 3,800 feet per second. Brother, that's fast, but even at this, if you saw the way the block jumps in the video, it's still delivering over 1,100 foot-pounds of energy, all right? Now, completely disintegrated the way it's designed to do, all right? Um, it's a big reason why I push France for a home defense. I don't need to be able to get through a bad guy's car, car door or a windshield or anything like that on the battlefield if I'm inside my own home. So uh, anyways, you see, that uh, our projectile completely franged into this half of the block. According to the FBI, you want everything in the back of the block, but I'm pretty sure if you guys watched that on uh, slow-mo with me, you saw that uh, you don't want that happening inside of your body. Not to be outdone, we're gonna put the cloth in front of it again, and we're gonna spin this block around. We'll hit it from the other side to show uh, that it doesn't make any difference. All right, so we shot the Inceptor 223 frangible ammo again. What we did was we spun the block around and we laid the cloth back over the end of it. And uh, so from this end, we shot without the cloth. From this end, we just shot with uh, the four layers of towel over it. Um, you see it's very, very similar. Uh, you get good, complete fragmentation. Uh, it's a little bomb going off inside of them. It's not like the ones that are pre-cut and you get five petals. Uh, the surgeon knows that. He goes in, he digs out the base, and he digs out five petals. The surgeon is so going to be pissed at you for putting that inside of the patient. That's, not, that's all now non-viable tissue. They've got to cut all of that out. There's no saving any of that right there. So um, anyways, great. 
a great performance uh, with fabric in front and without. Let's move on to our next round. All right, hey, this is the Federal uh, V-Shock. It's 55 grain, it's made for varmints. All right, um, you can see I entered low in the block and then it immediately disintegrated. There's uh, one small piece of the base that went all the way within about two inches of the back of the block, completely disintegrated. Now, uh, you, you're getting good secondary cavitation right here, this area of it, and then, but then they spread out. They're making separate uh, wound trails Right, you're gonna get a lot of bleeding with this and that's what hunters want. Likewise, in a home defense situation, which is the scenario we're talking here, we're not talking on the modern battlefield where I need penetration, need everything else. For a home defense situation, I like soft point varmint ammo in 5.56. I like frangible ammo in 5.56 for my home defense guns, right? Um, you can see, I don't need to tell you, you can look at the block, guys. Um, when you rewind and you, I want you to go back and watch and see what the 12 gauge double op buckshot did. Going through this, passing through the wall into the bedroom where our loved ones are gonna be sleeping, where your loved ones are gonna be sleeping. So anyways, uh, what do I know? Right. We're gonna shoot this one more time with the blanket there. All right, so we hit it with the 55 grain nozzler ballistic tip again. Now, again, varmint ammo, but this time we hit it with the four layers of linen towel on top of it. Putting the cloth in front of it doesn't affect it like, uh, like it does hollow points. Hollow points, a lot of layers of clothing will clog those hollow points and cuts down on their performance. You don't have that when you're using a ballistic tip on the bullets. Uh, so you see we've got great secondary cavitation here and if you look at all the separate little wound trails from all the fragments uh, this guy's going to be having a bad day um, so anyways it's fun shooting these ballistic blocks uh, first thanks off to our patrons for helping us build these walls purchase all the supplies that we need here all the different types of ammo finding the uh, finding the stuff, getting the blocks, building the walls. There's a lot of work that goes into this. So thanks again to all of our patrons for all of that. Um, you know, I got a lot out of this test. I hope that you did too. Everything from, you know, uh, the standard buckshot being uh, the solution for everybody for home defense, uh, 12 gauge, onto the standard for 45 hollow points. We talked about some frangible ammo. Uh, some of the new G9 stuff, and G9's got some great stuff out there, especially for law enforcement and military. Uh, and then we got into 556. Uh, if you want to see what the ball and the different types of 556 do, for example, the M855 versus the M85A1, uh, there are other videos for that out there. But for me, for home defense, gents, I'm still going to say best weapon for home defense is going to be a, a small caliber rifle. Uh, short barrel uh, rifle, it doesn't have to be an AR, right? Uh, AK, 300 Blackout, Travor, uh, MDR, whatever it is, I don't care, but go with a rifle round. You're gonna, bring, you're gonna go to a gunfight, you need to bring a rifle. That's all we got, y'all take care, shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything. If you like the shirt that we're wearing in the video, you can get it in our store.